December 7th, welcome to another very exciting advent calendar video. Today we're talking about the basics of auto layout and auto layout is so important. So let's get started by creating a new Xcode project. I am going to use a single view application and I'm going to name it auto layout. Let's create that project on the desktop. And before we get directly into auto layout, let's talk about some theory first, because there is a difference between using auto layout and using a frame based approach for your user interface. So this would be a frame based approach where you give exact values for your views and also for the origin of your views. For example, the upper view here has an origin at 2020 and a height of 80 and a width of 120. If you would do that in a storyboard, let's just quickly bring up a UI view, give it a color so that we can see it a little better. And then we adjust in the size inspector, the origin to 20 and 20, height 80 and width 120. No, it was, it's the other way around, width 120 and height 80. So this would be our view. And Xcode gives us a great feature to check our user interface and to see how it looks on different devices. As you can see here at the moment in the lower left corner, at the moment it's set to an iPhone 7. And if I click on that button, I can change my device, for example, to an iPhone 7 Plus, still looks nice, and to an iPhone SE, for example, and it still looks nice. But what happens if I, for example, position my view in the center? Then let's have a look what happens it isn't in the center anymore on iPhone 7, although it was in the center for an iPhone SE, and it's still not in the center for an iPhone 7 Plus, and it is not in the center for an iPad Pro 9.7 inches. So let's go back down to the iPhone 7 and see what the problem is. We set our position explicitly, and also we defined width and height explicitly using the frame of our view. And what we can do without using auto layout is using auto resizing masks, which you will find in the size inspector. And here it says auto resizing. And as you can see, we have four positions where we can pin our view to. So if I wanted to position my view in the center, I had to deactivate all of the auto resizing masks, setting my view here in the center, and then Xcode automatically generates my constraints at compile time. So if I go down to an iPhone SE, it still looks good. It looks good on an iPhone 7 Plus and so on. We can do even more. We can, for example, size up our view to fit the complete screen and activate all of the auto resizing masks to pin our view to all the edges and also make it resize in height and width by clicking on those arrows. And if I now change to a different device, they still behave or our view still behaves as we expect that to be. These auto resizing masks work fine if you have a simple layout and they make things a lot easier again um, when you just have to do something like this adding or pinning a view to all the edges and resizing it accordingly. But if you want to create more complex layouts or more complex user interfaces, then you will have to set the auto layout constraints yourself and you cannot just rely on those auto resizing masks. So in comparison to a frame based layout, you do no longer supply your views with an exact uh, width and height and exact origin. You create relations between different views and to the container view. So in this example, we have auto layout set to respect distances of 20 points from the left, from the top and from the right, and also a distance of at least eight points between those two views. But as you can see, the height of those two views are variable, which means that on an iPad, you might have a greater distance between those two views than on an iPhone. So how does that look in Interface Builder and how can we really set those auto layout constraints? Let's start by changing the size of our view a little here. I want to position it somewhere in the top left corner, but not at the edge. And I want to uh, position it in a way that it respects those guides that we have here. And I want to copy that view and have the same view 
on the other side. So this would be my layout. Now I'm changing my background color here a little with another predefined color, let's say kind of this uh, blue color. And let's see how this behaves on different devices. So at the moment, we are on iPhone SE. Let's have a look at the iPhone 7. This does not exactly look as we want this to be. And also, if we change the orientation to landscape, for example, it really does not look as we want this to. So let's have a quick look at the auto resizing mask. And as you can see, it is still set to fill the screen somehow, and this of course does not work for both views, which means that we need to add some auto layout constraints. And as soon as you add auto layout constraints, auto resizing masks are no longer respected. So we're starting by selecting maybe our orange view or our yellow view, and there are quite a few ways to define auto layout constraints. So for example, we can have a look at the lower right corner and click on the second symbol from the right where it says add new constraint, and if we select our yellow view and click on that symbol again, then we can add new constraints. And it uh, interface builder detects that our view is currently 16 points from the left, zero points from the top and eight points from the bottom. So I can select all of those constraints and simply click the add three constraints button and I've set my constraints. Another way to create constraints is to press control on the keyboard and drag to a specific location on your view or your container view. And if I release the mouse, then I can select the different constraints that are available to me at the moment or that Xcode thinks that I want to set. If you want to have a list of all the available constraints, what you can also do is pr press control on a keyboard again and drag to your view controller scene to the container view here. And then you get all of the possibilities that you have at the moment. But what possibilities are there exactly? So let's have a look at this image for a second. So you always have the left or, or leading attribute available, the top attribute, right or trailing, bottom, width, height, and you can also center your view in y direction or in x direction. So these are the attributes that are available to you and these are the attributes um, that you can use to define your layout. So let's have a look. We want to pin my view to the right, to the bottom and to the top. So we would speak about a trailing space to my container view and a top space and a bottom space to my container view. So again, I press control on the keyboard, drag to my container view, and then I do not want to have a leading space. My orange um, view has a leading space to, to the container margin. But what I want is a trailing space, a vertical spacing to the top layout guide and a vertical spacing to the bottom layout guide. And if I want to select multiple layout constraints at once, I can press shift on the keyboard and select the trailing space, the vertical spacing to the top, and the vertical spacing to the bottom. And if I'm finished, I hit return. And with that, I've set almost all the constraints that are necessary. But as you can see, we have some red lines here in our view controller and red lines in conjunction with auto layout constraints or auto layout isn't good. So what you want are blue lines and not red lines and not orange lines. So if we have a look at our view controller scene, you can see this red dot with the arrow in it. And this tells us what's missing or what the problem seems to be. And as you can see, we need a constraint for the X position or width, unless we supply auto layout with that, it is not sure how to create our layout. And indeed, we do not know the X position of our blue view because we have not stated what should happen with the X position. So what we should do is specify the distance between those views. And we can simply do that by clicking with press control key on the keyboard and dragging to, for example, from the blue view to the orange view and set horizontal spacing. And with that, we get this little constraint here and we still have a problem. Now we do know the X position of our blue view and we know the X position of our orange view. But what we do not know is the width of both of them. So what we can also do is to say that both should have an equal width. So I'm again pressing control on the keyboard and drag to my other view and then I say equal widths. And as soon as I do that, I get only blue lines there is no auto layout issue anymore and we're completely done. And we can now test our layout with those different devices available to us. So let's go to an iPhone 7 and we have the expected result. Let's go to an iPhone 7 Plus, still the great result. Even up 
to an iPad. We still have the same result, but what happens now if we change the orientation? Still, it works as we intend it to be. And even if we go down to an iPhone SE again, we have the result that we actually wanted. So this is how auto layout works and it is a little difficult to get used to, but try to think of different challenges for yourself and try to achieve different layouts by setting different constraints and you just need to get the hang of it a little bit. And with that, I hope that I supported you in getting started with auto layout. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.